Now for our story. David Bowman was an attractive man. He'd always taken a modest pride in keeping his body lean and sturdy, and the healthy, active life he'd led in his youth stood him in good stead now when he was close to 50. His thick gray hair still had the hint of curl which had tempted women to run their hands through it in his college days, and his gray-green eyes were clear with fine, slanting smile lines at the corners. David had always dressed in good, though rather conservative, taste. But today, as he sat opposite Lily Devon, the lovely blonde entertainer from Chicago in his little enclosure at the bank, an observant person might have noticed a subtle, almost indefinable change. Perhaps it was the fact that his solid blue tie was a shade brighter in color than was customary with him, or it might be that a touch more of handkerchief was showing in the breast pocket of his well-cut suit. Now, whatever it was, there was an undeniably approving look in Lily Devon's eyes, as she said. It was awfully nice of you to get these papers ready so soon, Mr. Bowman. I know Dell's anxious to get things settled. No trouble at all, Miss Devon. Glad to do it. You know, I, I wish you'd call me Lily. That is, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'm not used to being Miss. Makes me feel kind of formal. Well, that's very nice of you. Matter of fact, I was going to suggest that Oh, you... no. I, I mean, if you're going to say what I think you are, Mr. Bowman, I... I just couldn't. I mean, you're a, a businessman. A... <laughs> oh, you know what I mean. It wouldn't seem right for me to be informal with you. I believe I know what you're trying to say, Lily. Well, perhaps you're right. People do have a tendency to think of bankers somewhat as they think of doctors. <laughs> or even streetcar motormen. <laughs> Never think of them as individuals out of their professional capacity, you might say. And then, when a man gets to be my age... Oh, I didn't mean... Oh, but you're not old, Mr. Bowman. Not a bit. I mean, I used to be a little scared of you, as I told you before. But not now. <laughs> I'm glad you're not scared of me anymore, Lily. I was quite shocked to learn what an ogre I must have seemed to you. <laughs> oh, well, you mustn't pay any attention to me. Oh, I'm such a dope. I get wound up sometimes and say the darndest things. Never have learned to keep a mouth shut. <laughs> I hope you never do. It makes conversation with you a series of delightful surprises. I enjoyed our little dinner the other night all the more because of your wonderful lack of affectation. It's quite refreshing to find someone like you in this day and age. Oh, I had an awfully good time, too. The nicest time I've had since I came to Wakefield. Well, that makes me very happy. But let me see now. You've been in Wakefield several weeks now, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Well, I should think in all that time, an attractive young woman like you would have found some young man to rush her off her feet. <laughs> I must admit it hasn't happened. Oh, well, I know we're not oversupplied with eligible young bachelors here in town, but still, there must be one or two who have the proper qualifications. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Bowman. Maybe I haven't made up my mind just what the proper qualifications are. Besides, even if I did, the other guy might not think I have them. Oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> well, honestly, I'm afraid I haven't what you call a universal appeal. But at present, I've got this job of mine to keep me busy. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many things come up trying to get a place started. I've been running around in circles most of the time. But you mustn't work too hard, though. You need a bit of relaxation now and then. Uh, perhaps we can have another little dinner party before long. That is, if you'd like to. Oh, yes, I'd love to. Really, I would. Fine. Suppose I telephone you at the hotel. Mr. Bowman, greetings and salutation. Well, hello there, Brad. How are you? Pardon the interruption, but I'd like to talk to you for a moment uh, when you're free. Oh, I believe we can manage that, Brett. Oh, I'm just run along. I'll be with you in a moment, Brett. Uh, Lily, if you'll sign these papers where I've marked them and send them on to Mrs. Shipley. I will. And thanks an awful lot, Mr. Bowman. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop in in the meanwhile. Thanks. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Uh, come in, Brett. Okay. Say, who's the charming blonde? They didn't have anything like that around here when I went away. Uh, Miss Devon is a friend of Mary Lane's. Well, what's she doing here in Wakefield, of all places? Well, she's opening a supper club at the Brown Palace Hotel. You don't say. Well, things are really looking up. Now, you understand, Mr. Bowman, my interest is purely academic. The young lady looks rather expensive. And in my financial straits, which uh, brings us around to the purpose of this visitation. Well, I'm glad you dropped in, Brett, even for business reasons. I'd heard you were back. I'm glad to see you looking so well. In the pink, Mr. Bowman. Well, I've noticed that most of the boys do look mighty fit. They've been drifting home one by one. Now that you're back, I guess that accounts for just about everyone. Yeah, leave it to me. First one over, last one back. That's the luck of the Cameron. Oh, now, Brett. 
I wouldn't put you down as having been badly treated by life. You've got that nice little cottage there, lovely grounds. I imagine you're intending to take over again, aren't you? What else can I do? At least I'll have a roof over my head. Yes, Miss Bowman, you can look forward to hearing the sounds of merriment and revelry floating over to you across the river again. Well, it'll be nice to see your lights over there. I thought about it often while you were away. It seemed quite dismal having a place in darkness every night. I hope you found everything in good repair. Oh, yes, yes. My tenants in the big house looked after things very nicely. Mm -hmm. Have you made any plans as to what you're going to do now? Plans, Mr. Bowman? You ought to know me better than that. I expect I'll just go along in my own useless way, having as good a time as I can within the limitations imposed by my unfortunate financial standard. Brett, have you thought about taking a job? Work? Well, there's nothing like work to... Uh, please, Mr. Bowman, I, I'm very sensitive. The very word gives me the shudders. <laughs> You're absolutely unregenerate, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Irresponsible, footloose, totally useless. Awful, isn't it? Frankly, Brett, I think it is, rather. I know you do. But unfortunately, I'm so lost to the respectable humdrum walks of life that I don't even resent criticism. In fact, I anticipated you taking a rather severe tone with me when I came in today. You see, I've been wondering if we couldn't work out some means, some, some way by which I could lay my hands on a bit of that principle Dad left me. Now, this tiny income of mine is just enough to cover the minimum necessities. But good Lord, my boy, you know the terms of your father's will, the way the estate was set up. No, I'm afraid it's completely out of the question. By which you mean you refuse to consider doing anything about it, hmm? Even if it were in my power, too, I'd very likely to refuse you, yes. I admit that. But as it is... Oh, come now, Mr. Bowman. You could if you took it into your head. There must be a way of getting around such things. I'm afraid not, Brett. And at the risk of your considering me an old grouch, I feel well, that Not I... a grouch, exactly, but... Shall we say just a bit on the stuffy side? Well, even so, Brett. I must say I'd never see my way clear to tampering with the trust fund your father set up for you. He knew you pretty well, my boy. Well, that's the verdict. I guess I'm stuck. Just have to worry along as best I can. I'd like to remind you again that there is an alternative. You mean I can always go to work? But you see, that's the very last thing I'll do. I, I prefer to live by my wits. Hmm. Rather a chancy undertaking in these times. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll manage Better than you think, maybe. Brett Cameron accepted his defeat cheerfully enough. Leaving the bank, he strolled down to the drugstore. Went directly to a telephone booth in the corner. Two one three J, please. Okay. Hello. Is that you, Jesse? Hello, darling. Yes, of course it is. I knew you wouldn't forget my word. When am I going to see you? Oh, yes, I am, darling. Well, what if you are? Just because you're Mrs. Ben Calvert, you can't have changed. Nonsense. Look, my sweet, I'll expect you this afternoon. Oh, no? We'll see. Certainly I am. And I'm sure of you, too. Goodbye, Jesse. Until later. Jesse Calvert, Ben's wife, and Brett Cameron, the dissolute, charming man who had told David Bowman only a short while ago that he refused to take a job, preferred to live by his wits. What did Brett mean by that somewhat ambiguous phrase? And had Jesse Calvert anything to do with what he meant by it? <laughs> 